There is a wondrous island off the coast of the People's Republic of China that stretches 13,814 square miles. You might know it as the Republic of China, Taiwan, or Formosa. About two-thirds of the land is covered by mountains. The land produces many crops, including rice and some of the most delicious fruit you will ever taste. The island has suffered a very complicated history. It has found itself under the control of many, the Dutch, the Ming Dynasty, the Qing Dynasty, and the Japanese. The island's status today is debated by many. Is it a province of the mainland? Should it be an independent country? Who should be recognized as the official government? The People's Republic of China or the Republic of China? What light does history shed on these questions? The debate is never ending. It is a land in which democracy thrives. It is believed to be the example for democracy in East Asia. The Taiwanese government is divided into five branches, the executive, legislative, judicial, control, and examination. It has opened its doors to multiple parties, but two main parties dominate the scene. Kuomintang believe in reunification with China as the Republic of China. On the other hand, the Democratic Progressive Party believes in Taiwan independence. It is known to have experienced an economic miracle in the 1960s that has transformed the country. Since then, economic growth has slowed and its relations with China have become very important to its economy. Now, the island is home to over 23 million people whose culture has been shaped and transformed by a complicated history. After being under the rule of many, who are the Taiwanese today? They are parents. They are children. They are scooter drivers. They are believers. They are demonstrators. They are in love. They are friends. They are workers. They are health conscious. They are subway riders. They are performers. They are shoppers. They are students. They are Chinese checker players. But, but who, who are, are they? they? I'm Taiwanese. Taiwanese. I'm Taiwanese. I'm Taiwanese. Taiwanese. I'm a Taiwanese. I am Taiwanese. 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 I'm a Taiwanese. 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 I'm Taiwanese. This is, is Taiwan. Taiwan. I think I can pinpoint the moment I fell in love with Taiwan. We were at the Sun Yat-sen Memorial, and if you've ever been there, you know there's a fountain and there's a lot of um, Taiwanese flags around the fountain. And as we were there, this uh, a Taiwanese flag fell over, and right away I see a man going to fix it. And I watched him, and he, he struggled for a while, and he said they're trying to fix it. And in the end, he actually got it to stand up, and again, the Taiwanese fly was gloriously flying in the wind. Um, and then, so after he was done, I stopped and watched to see if he was a worker. And no, he was actually just a husband of one of the families that was there. And it just, it, it really hit me. To be in a culture where the people care and you just fall in love with the people and you fall in love with all of the little things. I think that's that's what I love about Taiwan, all the little things. The people are so welcoming, so hospitable. Um, 
it's a little different than what you see in Western countries. I think my favorite part about Taiwan was just simply getting to explore it. Any country that I go to, if I can get away for a while and just go to random places and check them out, I think that's my, my favorite activity to do. The amount of learning that you do just going out and experiencing a country is beyond anything that you can learn in a textbook. So we were sitting down having lunch with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and I'm sitting down next to this uh, gentleman and we start talking and he starts talking about a trip he had to China and he gets really serious and he says, you know, we speak the same language, we both use chopsticks, but we're completely different. And so that just brought so many thoughts to my mind and started bringing up the question of what is Taiwanese identity? Who are they? The concept behind the programs that are made and maintained for students in the United States and for students in Taiwan is a very, very important concept that I think needs to be adopted worldwide and that is creating programs to send students to different countries to meet other people and form friendships now while they can, while they're still in college and keep those friendships with the idea that one day all of these kids are going to be important people and if they keep these friendships and they're all important people then they can easily further relations between the two countries together and I think that that's a very important investment to make in all students because you never know where one friendship can go, where it, where it starts with a small study abroad or a small two-week trip and then it ends up in you know, contracts and treaties and, and further development of the relationship between two countries. And I think that that's a very noble cause and a very important concept to be understood. I'd go back to Taiwan in a heartbeat, absolutely. I don't think the question, would you ever go back to Taiwan, is a good question because it shouldn't, there is no question. You don't, you don't need to ask me, would I go back to Taiwan? I will go back to Taiwan. Yeah, yeah, yeah.